ChatGPT Plus, Clock Pro, Gemini Advanced, Perplexity Pro, I believe all of us start using the free version. And at a certain point, you start wondering if you should upgrade to those premium versions. I know that lots of AI models, leaderboards, lots of videos talking about which is the single best AI. But do you really trust that's gonna be an absolute ultimate winner? I don't trust that. AI is changing so fast. So instead of tightly chasing the so-called best AI, what you should really do is pick the one that you actually gonna use every day and not waste money. In this video, I'm gonna share my honest take from my own experience of using these premium versions and hopefully help you pick not the best one, but the most suitable one. Disclaimer though, I use this tool mainly for digital marketing and business tasks. I don't use them to code or building apps. If you are a coder, then this video is not for you. Also. I use mainly the desktop versions. The only app that I use is actually Perplexity. For all these chatbots, I personally use both free and paid versions, except for Gemini. I mainly test its advanced model using its AI studio, but not the paid subscription. The first one, ChatGPT. It is the earliest AI chatbot that launched in the market among the four, making it a very popular option for most people. I still remember the time I used it when the 3.5 model was first launched. I was super excited. Now with all other AI players coming and all the advanced AI models, I would say ChatGPT 4 performance is still good but it is not as exciting as it used to be. Sometimes I even feel that OpenAI is facing lots of pressures to add lots of features to ChatGPT4, like voice recognition, web browsing, but not able to promise a really superior performance in certain areas. For example, like web browsing, to me is almost useless. No one is talking about it. Why? Because even if you turn on, the response is still outdated. It's just not real-time browsing. So the biggest thing that I've found is that it is suitable for any kinds of simple or complex tasks, unlike other AI chatbots, which perform really well in certain areas. I use it mainly for generating ideas and brainstorming, doing small scale data analysis, like getting summarized insights from charts, data, PDF reports to save my time. Another big bonus is on customization. There are thousands of GPTs you can choose from, which are custom versions of GPTs for specific tasks like writing, research, analysis are some big categories. Or you can create your own custom GPTs if you don't find anything for specific needs. Because of its high popularity, that's great integration support with other systems like Sapia, Notion, Shopify. It also has the best support in terms of input file formats. And a surprising thing about using ChatGPT 4 is that it has a super high usage limit, especially compared to Clock. Since I used the paid version, I have never encountered hitting the usage limit. Even when I asked it to analyze a big data set of Excel data, it never hits the usage limit. It is much more generous than other AI chatbots. However, it also has limitation. The biggest one I found is hallucination. This really annoys me. ChatGPT 4 tends to hallucinate more among all the four AI chatbots that have used it. It is super conversational and and sometimes it will make up a response that it actually doesn't have information about. And you need to verify the information yourself. Although you can still twist your prompt or use custom instruction to reduce hallucination, it makes it less useful when you need to use it as a learning tool or getting factual updated information. Another thing is it tends to forget things as the chat message get long. You will find it suddenly forget some of the details and that probably because the information you're giving to it has the contextual window limits. And in fact, ChatGPT 4 has the lowest contextual window limits compared to Clock Pro or Gemini Advanced. Probably this may be the reasons why they launched the memory features, which I found useful. You can just ask it to remember anything related to the chat. So if you want a more all-in-one solution and are able to handle a variety of different tasks, ChatGPT 4 is a great choice for you. I wouldn't say its performance across all areas is superior, like I mentioned, but definitely good enough if you want a daily productivity boost out of your existing routine tasks while you don't have a specific preference on the AI models. But if your tasks mainly involve test writing and test document analysis, and you really appreciate a very thoughtful, coherent, humanized response, then you should consider the next one, Clock Pro. Clock is now my new favorite. I immediately upgraded as soon as it's available in Canada. It had never disappointed me so far since the upgrade. Now I use it daily and start using it more than I used ChatGPT before, to be honest. I use it mainly for brainstorming and text generation from video titles, thumbnail text, to even strategic thinking for my business. Because the response is always useful and not generic, it always thinks from a dynamic perspective. I get lots of fresh angles 
roles that I probably wouldn't be able to think of myself. It always makes you feel comfortable to chat with. And this is an experience you won't get from Chachi before. And when you explore about his company, Anthropic, the CEO, Dario, is actually coming from OpenAI. He left OpenAI because he decides to focus on AI safety and alignments with human values. Then you won't be surprised why the experience is so different on Clock compared with ChatGPT4. It is also a really good writer that can mimic your writing style well with use of complex sentence structure, but still sounds natural. Sometimes I also use it to generate draft for my social posts, proofread to optimize the sentence flow, video description, or other mini test generation tasks. The biggest strength of Clock Pro is the large contextual window size, which has 200,000 tokens. That means it can intake about 500 pages of text or more. While on the free versions, you may encounter a lot more restrictions in terms of the message length. You can fit it with lots of documents, tags, and do analysis summaries. And I found this is particularly useful if you use it together with its project features, which is only available on its paid version. So under each project, you can fit it with all relevant information, background information, information and you can set custom instructions for all the chats that's happening in the project. It is similar to ChatGPT's custom GPTs, but I found it's even more useful because it's project-based, so you don't need to restate all the context and background whenever you start a new chat. Now there are some surprise to me, Clock is really excelling in retaining context. It never misses a single detail, its response is always human with excellent understanding of the whole context and attention to detail. It always tries to think like a human it gives you suggestions even if you don't ask. Unlike other chatbots, they just list their pros and cons, and the response is always inconclusive. There is an official prompting guide, library, and even a prompt generator specifically designed for use with Clock that is super useful. So how about the weakness? I think the biggest one is that it can't access to internet for real-time information, so the response can be outdated, often has a few months of latency. So I don't recommend you ask questions related to trends or news. Also, even though on the pro plan, the usage limits on the message length can be restrictive sometimes. And I found the most annoying thing is it lacks transparency on the usage limit except just a warning message. This is particularly obvious when you use it to analyze large data sets in Excel or CSV format. You also can't generate images, which I tend to believe is the intention not to explore in this area because of its potential safety and copyright issues. And also, it doesn't have external plugins or extension to extend the functionality. The biggest reason you should consider switching to Clock Pro is that you really use it a lot. Other than that, the free versions should be sufficient unless you also want its project features. Because on the free plan, you enjoy almost the same set of features. You can upload documents, use artifacts. The only difference is the message you can send is very restrictive. Around 40 short messages per day, which makes it not really useful. The next one, Gemini advice. To be honest, Google Gemini is the only AI out of four that I haven't subscribed yet until now. I'm still using its free version. When it first rolled out, I was impressed because of its multi-model capability and particularly its creative writing ability. Gemini is always able to generate lots of creative ideas, taglines, hooks, they sound natural and human. I also like how it always provides three versions in its response and the double check response, which is very helpful and unique features that you won't able to find from other chatbots. The biggest strength for Gemini advice is definitely is 1 million tokens contextual window with its latest AI models 1.5 Pro. That's approximately up to 1,500 pages PDF. So you can upload different large documents, images for analysis. It also has much reduced hallucinations compared with ChatGPT 4 and its latest updates is also giving 2 million tokens to Gemini API and Google AI Studio. This will be a big plus if you use it for coding. If you want to give it a try, you can go to AI Studio. I will include the link below. Another strength is its integration with Google ecosystem using the Gemini extension like Google Maps, your Gmail, Drive, and YouTube. And with Gemini Advice, you can even use Gemini directly on Gmail and Google Doc, and you can execute tasks more efficiently. A great surprise to me is that the over upgrade package is really attractive. You have one month free trial, you got two TB of Google One storage along with your subscription, which is a big deal. You can also share with others. And also, it has the biggest coverage of support 
country out of the four, so very likely you're able to use it no matter where you are. But why I didn't upgrade? First, I found the performance of Gemini is not quite predictable and I found it's quite restrictive in its response after I have used it for a while. I kind of understand this because it's developed by Google, which is one of the biggest tech corporations in the world. So the expectation from a public on Gemini to say the right things is just so high. So sometimes it say it can't execute the tasks, but then after a few attempts, it will try to give you the response. You will also find it to refuse to provide answers to questions that might involve even minimal risk or potential liability. I would say it's even more obvious than clock. So although I'm impressed by its creative writing capability, its fluctuations in the response quality just make it less useful compared with other popular AI chatbots. And this also makes me hesitate to upgrade. And this restriction is so obvious that Google even paused the generation of image of people capability. And second, its response on the same question is just not as in-depth as compared with ChatGPT and Clock Pro, although the answer is correct. And also, I find most of the features on the free versions are already sufficient for most of my use cases. And because other AI like Clock Perplexity is really strong, so there's not a strong push for me to do the upgrade. So when you should consider going for Google Gemini advice, if you are a heavy user of Google Webplace and you appreciate the seamless integrations of using Gemini in this product, Gemini advice definitely has an advantage. Also, Google is a top player in search. I think if they fully integrate that real-time search capability into Google Gemini, then it will be a complete different story than it is right now. Now let's move on to Perplexity Pro. Since I started using Perplexity for a while, I immediately switched to Pro. I use it daily and I even install its app so I can search things on the go whenever I come across a piece of news, a trend, and a new tool. It just tannics my productivity in researching, finding information, and learning as well. And you got so much value added when you do the upgrade. You get more pro searches for more in-depth research and breaking down complex questions, which means even if you type a very complicated question, lots of context, it can still understand very well and be able to give you organized answers. You can also switch to other advanced models on Perplexity Pro, which is another bonus. But I would say the biggest strength of Perplexity Pro is actually its response freshness and with lots of sources as backup. It always pulls the latest information whenever you ask time-sensitive questions almost in real time, making it no difference compared with a standard search engine. And I can say Perplexity is the most outstanding AI search engines that I have used it so far. And I found a surprisingly useful feature on Perplexity Pro is the rewrite function. You can just ask it to rewrite any sort of response using different AI models to get a more satisfied response. For example, I really like Clock Free because it's great for summarizing information with human-like response. And so I can even change it to my default AI model. If I really have to say something about its limitation, I would say it's not good to do any kinds of tasks other than search-based query. So for example, if you needed to do data analysis, image generation, or text generation, other AI tools like ChatGPT just do it better. I'm not saying that perplexed they can do it, but the performance definitely wouldn't be that outstanding as you compare with other chatbots. I also have a very in-depth comparison video about Perplexity Pro and ChatGPT4. You can check it out. Also, sometimes the surface is not stable. Since I've used it for probably three to four months, I've encountered at least two times of surface outage, and sometimes the response will be quite slow and a bit laggy. So if your daily tasks involve lots of researching, finding factual up-to-date information, or even learning new knowledge on Google, you should consider Perplexity Pro. It will save you lots of time finding the right information. And to be honest, nowadays I seldom use Google. I think I use Google mainly because I need to check ranking results or search features, or I have a really specific question that I want to manually check on Google. So here's the wrap. Basically, it really depends on your needs. As I said, there is no absolute winner. Some AI excel in certain areas while some don't. You just need to weigh in your case which is the most important important factor. For example, if getting the most up-to-date information is the most important factor, then absolutely go for Perplexity Pro. And if you think a humanized writer is a non-negotiable, then go for Clock. I also make a cheat sheet for you. You can find the download link below. Now some of my final thoughts regarding upgrading. First, try to lay out all your important factors and see if you can still able to achieve each one with the free versions. Sometimes the free version can still do the job, but perhaps they're just more constrained like usage limits. So be open to 
using a mix of premium and free tools depending on your needs. And second, I don't recommend subscribing on any plan but monthly basis as this AI just changed super fast. Like perplexity, I'm still subscribing on a monthly basis. And finally, don't fear of missing out. In the end, you don't need to chase the so-called number one because in reality, the difference in the outcome is just not as much as you think. You still need to review the response with your strategic thinking, critical judgment. AI is just a compliment. It won't 100% replace your input as a human. If you enjoyed this video, please show me your support by hitting the like and subscribe button. And before you go, make sure you also watch my other videos about some great AI prompting techniques that you can use on all these AI chatbots. I guarantee you will like it. See you soon.